I am Lisa Hennessy, and welcome back to Knit, Pray, Crochet. This is episode nine. And first of all, I want to thank you if you made it through episode eight because I had a stuffy head and it was really hard to hear me because I, I my ears were clogged. But I feel better today. I am back to my perky self. So um, again, just thank you for being patient with me. Um, today I am wearing a scarf that was made by one of my sister-in-laws. My husband's, one of his sisters um, has a loom and she does weaving. And so this is one of my favorite gifts. Well, she also makes kitchen towels, which I love my kitchen towels too. But this one is just, it's a nice lightweight um, scarf, which is great for Texas weather. So I really appreciate her gifts. And when you knit or crochet or weave, you really appreciate a handmade gift because you know the love that goes into it. And she thinks this is super easy, but it is not. I've watched her do it and I don't have the patience to, to do it. So I really admire her for doing the weaving. But because I was sick last week, I had a lot of time home to knit. Um, I was positive until Saturday. And so from Saturday to Friday, I was home knitting. And so I did finish Lincoln's sweater and a hat. And I'll have to, I think the hat I used was called a sailor rib or something like that. I don't remember. I'll try to find it, put the link to it. But um, this is a picture of him in his sweater. I, I got to see him this weekend. Look at him. Look how cute Lincoln is. That's his sweater. And then his hat and his sweater are right there. He looks so cute, doesn't he? My daughter said, he looks like a grandpa. I go, I know, that's what makes it so cute. Um, anyway, I obviously love my grandma, my grandson, my proud grandma. Um, so the, that, I did finish that, and I was able to give it to him, and they fit him. They, they look nice on him. So, and the, actually, the sweater will probably fit him for a while, because um, I did a ribbing so he could roll it up so he can wear it um, down, too. So, and it was roomy. Um, I started this blanket last week, which was made with this big twist, and I typically use... Burnett blanket yarn, but these are the colors I needed because my uh, friend's grandson's nursery are going to be uh, fire truck colors and her son's a fireman, so she, it's red, gray, and white. So I actually, I'll probably finish this today. This is how much of it I finished. Um, almost done with one skein. I'll probably make a lovey to go along with it. When I wash it, I'm going to put those color catchers in. I'll probably put a couple of them. And then be on, on the final rinse, I'll do some vinegar. So that will be finished this week, probably today. Um, my prayer shawl, I am still working on it. I know it's been a while. Um, but actually, I got quite a bit done. And I really, this morning, it was kind of impressed on my heart to finish this because I feel like I might be giving it away sometime soon. So I'm going to really dedicate, now that I finished Lincoln's sweater, I'll be done with this baby blanket and I'm almost done with most of my Christmas gifts. I got a big jump start. Um, I think I have seven of the hair scrunchies made. And then the scrubbies were my next project. So I actually have this yarn. And I'm going to put in the show notes how many I passed on, um, what size needles I used. But this is Yarn Bee Scrubology Scrub It. And I have never used this. I bought this actually to make a back scrubber and for my husband, but I ended up finding one at the dollar store and I thought, well, that's a lot cheaper than $4.49, which again, I I wait till Hobby Lobby's yarn is 30% off, which is basically every other week. But this yarn, it is a um, cylinder. And so it's a thicker yarn. I typically use, when I make scrubbies, this yarn right here, Yarn B. Scrubology 2.0, and I like the silver and the black one because it's got some sparkle in it, um, but it's a totally different feel. This yarn is just like a thick and coarse. I don't know if you can hear that. And then this yarn is just a stretchier, softer feel. And these are great for nonstick pans and to scrub your air fryer because they're not abrasive. But what I did is I looked at the skein of yarn and it said, use a size 10 needle. So I used a size 10 needle and this is what it looked like. It's just kind of wonky and it was really hard to knit it. It was too tight. It's just too tight of a weave. I don't, I don't like it. So this is going to be mine. Um, but I cast on 14 and I used size 11 needles, which these needles 
I'm just going to show them to you. Somebody actually made these for me. Um, one of the a woman at church where I learned how to knit. Her husband actually, I think he, he knit and crochet, crocheted, but he made his own hooks and needles, and so he gave me those. I actually have some of the nice wooden hooks too. They're beautiful. Um, but I I used those size 11s, and I got four out of the one skein, and then I've got that one smaller one. So basically, I could get four full size scrubbies and one smaller one, which would be more like for for doing the small pots. Um, and what I do is, I, like I said, I cast on 14, and I think it was four and a half inches across, so then I just knit it for four and a half inches. And I did the same thing <clears throat> on my silver ones. I actually used a size 10, and I double the yarn on these, and um, I double it, I use two skeins, because if you try to pull it out from the center, it's gonna become a knotted mess, so it's just easier to pull it from the outside and use two strands at the same time. And I think I cast on 14 for this one too. So I will, I might have that, the one skein left of the Scrubology Scrub It. Um, and if you have any other patterns that you have used this yarn for, uh, post in my comments or let me know. And this is definitely, this yarn is definitely easier. Um, or I, I can't say easier because it's easier for me to knit it. But if you crochet, you could crochet Scrubbies up in no time at all with this yarn. But it is black and it's harder you know, to see when you're using black yarn. So I don't know if it'd be easier to crochet or not. If you crochet, let me know. And let me know if you think it's these knit up quick if you're using, or crochet up quick if you're using a um, black yarn. So those are my knitting ones for the week. Um, hopefully I'll finish my prayer shawl this week. Um, maybe start, uh, finish my scrubbies, and then I'll be done with my Christmas gifts. And um, I do have, I want to start a scarf for my husband. And I also have a hat that I would like to make for my daughter-in-law. And I would like to make some of the um, twisted rib skull caps that are from my Knit, Pray, Share book because I would like to give those as gifts to people um, out in the community. And I forgot to tell you, this um, pattern too, this is from my book, Knit, Pray, Share. And there's actually a pattern correction on my website for it. But that pattern correction is really if you're using the red yarn, and in my book, my patterns all start and end with the color red to symbolize how we're sealed with the blood of Christ from the beginning to the end. So that's why I had to make that pattern correction because if you're going to switch colors at the end, you, it needs to be on a knit side, um, otherwise it'll show the color change. So that's the, the pattern correction is for if you're doing a color change, but if, if you're doing a straight knit knitting blanket like I did, you can follow the pattern in the book. My devotion from knitprayshare.com is called Being Ready. And I use two different scriptures. I'm actually right now in the New Testament with my Bible reading plan, and it, it is chronological. So um, Matthew or Luke 12:40 and Mark 13:32 through 33 are the same stories but told from different perspectives. So Luke 12:40 is you also must be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. And then in Mark 13, 32 through 33, I like the ESB version. And it's, but concerning that day or that hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard, keep awake, for you do not know when that time will come. So these words are Jesus' words to his disciples. And since we are his disciples, they're his words to us too. There will be a second coming of Christ. This is not an abstract idea. God's word tells us that there will be a second coming. And only the Father knows when that day will occur. So until that time, as his disciples, we should be living a life that's loving God, serving God, and serving others. Wickedness cannot stop God's kingdom. Praise God that his church will outlast everything. The hope of the gospel is what comforts me during the rem remainder of my time here left on earth. Jesus is coming back for his followers. We will, will we live to see the second coming? I have no idea. But what I do know is one day I will get to see Jesus face to face. And so that got me to thinking about um, my dad's death because yesterday was 16 years since his, the day he died. And it just reminded me of a sweet story about him. Um, you know, we knew he had heart disease. He had had a triple bypass and a heart valve, a pig valve put in. And so 
we knew he was on borrowed time. Um, I knew he was a, was not going to live to be 80 or 90. That was just what, you know, the statistics tell you when someone has the kind of heart disease that he had. So the day he died, even though we knew, you know, he would not live a long life, we were still not prepared for it. He had walked on his treadmill, and after he walked on his treadmill, he sat down in his chair and just went to be with the Lord. And my he was known to kind of be a prankster. And so when my mom called his name and he didn't answer, she thought he was playing around with her, with her, but he wasn't. So she called 911 and I actually, I, I had built a house directly behind my mom and dad's home. So there was a gate from their backyard to my backyard. And so 911 actually called me and I ran over and I was on the phone with them and, um, I was um, performing CPR on my dad until the paramedics got there. And af after the paramedics took my dad away in the ambulance, my mom shared with me, she said, um, I think your dad knew he was dying because I wiped a tear from his face. <sighs> Sorry, <laughs> I needed a Kleenex close to me. Um, and it just broke me up because I thought, oh my gosh, my dad knew he was dying. And so I shared with one of my good friends who's also a prayer warrior, uh, which, this is another blog post for another day um, because it's really important as Christ followers to have other um, Christians in our life that can speak God's truth into us and that listen to the Holy Spirit and um, let the Holy Spirit flow through them. And so when I shared that story with her, she grabbed my hands and she said, Lisa, maybe that tear was because he saw the face of Jesus. And I can't tell you what a gift that was that the Holy Spirit gave her those words to speak to me. And when I asked her about it later, I said, you have no idea how comforting that was because I didn't think about that. And she said, Lisa, when I spoke those words, I had no idea where they came from. Those did not come from me. The Holy Spirit gave me those words to say to you. And I'm just so thankful that she listened to the Holy Spirit's prompting and shared that with me. Because, you know, we live a life serving God in, an, in, in anticipation of seeing Jesus face to face. And that's why I share my dad's story with you, because it gives me comfort to know that when I see Jesus, the tears I have will be for tears for joy, not for fear. I'll be so happy to see Jesus. I won't, I'll be overflowing with tears of joy. I mean, how could we not? Uh, and the thing, you know, this also struck me too, that our, even though our relationship with Jesus, is a person, it's our own personal relationship. It's not supposed to be private. God wants us to share that with other people. And so, you know, do you have any stories that you can share where, um, you could sh let unbelievers know of God's grace and mercy, how he's, he has put it in your life, how you've seen God's own grace and mercy that you can share that with unbelievers that can give them hope and maybe plant the seed to get them to be searching and um, seeking Jesus because pain and suffering are going to happen whether we know Jesus or not and the difference is in how we handle it do we do it alone or with God by our side because do we envision our day of dying that we're going to be spending eternity with Jesus or is it Bury, being buried in the ground with no hope of meeting our Heavenly Father. I mean, I don't know about you, but I would rather live with an expectant hope because of Jesus that I need not fear death, that I am promised an eternal life, everlasting life with my Father in Heaven. And I mean, praise God for that. I mean, that, I mean, I don't want to die, but I don't fear death because I know where I will be is so much better. It's not going to be just buried in the ground and that's the end. I mean, that doesn't give you any hope. Um, if I'm alive to see the day he returns, I don't, I want to listen to Jesus's words. I want to be alert and I want to be awake. I don't want to be asleep at the wheel. I mean, and we stay ready by living a life that brings him glory. We have a kingdom assignment and that's to tell other people in this unbelieving broken world about the gospel. We use the gifts he's blessed us with, whether it's like me, you knit, crochet, you use a loom and you can weave or if you bake or you write, whatever your gifts are, serving is a gift. You know, it doesn't have to be making a gift like I do to give to somebody. We have so many opportunities with the internet, with social media, uh, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, 
to to share the hope of Jesus, whether we share scriptures or just our stories of how God has worked in our life and how we've seen God's hand in our lives. But, you know, I'd like to know, what are you doing? Uh, what is your part in trying to share the gospel in your sphere of influence, whether it's a small corner of your world, uh, through work, events, um, at the grocery store, you know, at the gym, wherever. I mean, you have so many opportunities. I mean, what are you doing? I wish, I just want to know some other ideas because not everybody's crafty and can share their handmade gifts. So, I mean, if you could just share with me in the comments some way, some things you've done or maybe how someone shared the gospel with you that changed your life and you found Jesus. In fact, I'll probably write a story about that within the next few weeks about someone who had planted seeds and um, didn't probably know it at the time that they were doing that, or maybe they did um, because, you know, they can, God can speak to us in so many different ways. It's amazing. I'd like to end with my prayer from this week's blog post. Father God, forgive me when I let worldly activities replace serving you. I ask for opportunities to share my faith with those who live a life of unexpected hope. Open the door for me to share the gospel with them. I thank you that when this life here on earth passes away, that isn't the end. Spending eternity with you is a gift available to every person who accepts Jesus Christ into their hearts and lives as a personal Savior. Use me to share this truth to my corner of the world. It's in the name of Jesus Christ that I pray these things. Amen. Thank you again for joining me for episode nine. Um, I look forward to seeing you next week. Keep knitting, praying, and crocheting and sharing the love of Jesus in your corner of the world. I will see you next week. And again, like this video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and share it on your social media. I will see you next week.